Hey guys, this is John, and I'm playing Stelianski in the 15-minute pool on ICC. This is a rematch from yesterday. Um, I kind of want to play the Scandinavian today. Uh, I had a big blunder against this player yesterday and blew a uh, winning position. So let's see if we can improve today. The Scandi is just what the doctor ordered. I think I've only played maybe one or two other Scandinavian games in my 15-minute games. Trying to get a really good mix of defenses against D, uh, against E4 and against D4 too. Just really trying to play a lot of openings on this channel. So he's going into the tank. Remember yesterday he blitzed out the opening fairly fast. So we'll see if he responds with uh, similar speed today once we get going here. This is a little bit of an odd time to be thinking right on move four, but sometimes people do that just as a way to gather their thoughts. I actually notice this in Grandmaster games a lot. Like they'll think at a pretty early point in the game when clearly they know what to do and clearly they've seen the position before, but it's almost like they're trying to gather their thoughts for the coming struggle and they calm themselves down and they're ready to attack the position. Bishop E2 is Pretty sedate. I'll just play c6 against that. Just providing the queen an escape route. He castles short. This could be interesting if he decides to play for uh, b4. It is possible to do that. Like he could play b4 and if I take the pawn, rook b1, and he'll win b7. However, you normally see the b4 plan when white has fianchettoed g3, bishop g2, so it would be a lot less common in this case. So my plan is pretty simple, e6, knight bd7, decide where to put this bishop depending upon how he plays it. I may bring it to b4, I may content myself with a different square. Okay, h3. Maybe he's doing that so if bishop f4, I don't know, he has a retreat square. That's possible. I think bishop d6 is actually a pretty decent option right now. Let's do that. Just to beat him to the punch so he doesn't have bishop f4 available to him. Now bishop d3. Could simply take, um, knight bd7 is also possible, so if he takes, I could take with my queen. I can play bishop g6. Let's play bishop g6. I like to do this, um, I'm, I'm very partial to the structure where I get to take towards the center with this h-pawn. It introduces a small imbalance into the position. And generally, I never really feel that it hurts black too much to do that. So maybe I can get him to be the one to capture. Overall, this position is very calm. I mentioned this before, but I think white's best chances for an advantage against the Scandinavian involve white castle and queenside. Castle's kingside plans always seem to be easier for black to handle. I'll just play knight bd7. He's x-raying my king, but he can't derive any benefit from that. I'm keeping open the option of castling on either wing. So I very well may go queenside if I feel justified in doing so. It's a little tricky for him to find a good space for this bishop, because f4 would be the natural square, but he can't get there. So now I can decide which way to go. I'm probably going to go short, because if I go long, knight g5, attacking f7, seems annoying. It's kind of a weak reason for preferring castling short, but in my mind, knight g5 is not something I'd like to see. Also, my chances for a kingside attack are not huge. Yeah, so let's just do this. 
Maybe he'll take now. Sometimes people will delay this exchange on G6 until they know that the H file is closed, and then they'll go for it. It would be unlikely that I would have gotten play down the H file anyways with my rook standing on H8, but you never know. It might be a reasoning he takes into consideration. If bishop d2, I'll retreat my queen. c7 would be the usual square. We have this nice queen-bishop battery there, but b6 is also possible. Annoying the b2 pawn, also hitting d4. You can play bishop g5, but there's nothing associated really with that idea. It's just a way to get the bishop out to a semi-useful square. Rook fe8 will probably be my next neutral move that I'll play. It might be possible to play e5 and open up the center of the board. It would be sort of interesting for him to take on g6 and then play knight g5, which pressurizes f7 and also e6. I'd have to watch out for like um, knight takes e6 ideas. So he takes or he takes the knight into e5. It is protected there. I could take with the bishop on d3. And then if he took with his queen, he'd be losing a pawn on e5. So if bishop takes d3, he'll take with uh, the knight instead is what he'll surely do. He's also threatening knight c4 to some extent in this position. I can also take with my bishop and then play knight d5. That's a pretty good option too. So bishop takes e5, d takes e5, knight d5. I actually kind of like the look of that. Let's do that. I could take on d3 after this too, but I don't think I need to. I think just knight d5 immediately is good. So if he takes, c takes is fine. Queen takes might be interesting too. I'd probably lean slightly towards c takes, though. And I think with his pawn being on e5, it reduces the scope of his dark square bishop. Bishop d2 is, would be an expected move in this position as well. Um, I always have c7 if I want to drop my queen back there. can take on g6 as well. I'll take with my h-pawn if he does that. Okay, so bishop d2. So he's threatening maybe some discoveries. Knight takes d5 is even not a threat yet because of queen takes, but this is a scenario where I would move my queen. A lot of times you don't move the queen when they play bishop d2 if you determine that their knight has no useful discoveries. But here I probably will. Looking a little bit at queen b6, it's kind of a good square. It harasses the b-pawn. Yeah, maybe, maybe b6 is a bit better than c7. So if queen b6, knight takes d5, let's say c takes d5, you can maybe play bishop e3 then and try to establish the bishop on d4. Bishop e3, if I take on b2, rook b1, hmm, not entirely sure about that line. Okay, I'm going to go to c7. We'll go with the more pressure on e5 route. b6 was enticing, though. There is something to be said for that.
I'll pre-move this capture. On the previous move, I didn't want to take on c3 because they could take with the bishop with tempo and also help some guard e5. So I'm looking to improve my pawn structure somewhat by taking towards the center. That's the line I'm adopting. If he takes on d5 and I take with my c pawn, I have useful pressure down the half open c file. We've opened up a little bit of a time advantage. It's nice playing systems like this that you're very familiar with because I do have this time advantage. I feel like I'm better able to reel off moves in the opening and predict what middle games we're going to get out of that. That's the real advantage of opening preparation, in my opinion, is the ability to anticipate what type of middle game you're going to get. He does have bishop b4 here, but I was thinking maybe just knight c5 against that. Not the most exciting move in the world, but if bishop b4 and I move my rook, I would have to reckon with bishop d6. Seems like a good square for his bishop. So I don't know if I'll do that. After bishop b4, knight c5, I am kind of pinned, but he can't increase the pressure on that piece. So I think it's acceptable. Yeah, let's just do this. I can play b6 if I want. I can move my rook and then try to move my knight later. If he takes on g6 now, it'd be interesting to take with the f-pawn and open the file. Hmm. I'm going to give that some thought because I kind of like that idea. It weakens e6, but how's he really going to get at e6? It's not an easy pawn to assault. H takes is perfectly fine. I mean, it's just a normal looking move. But I'm kind of enticed by f takes. The idea of maybe rook f5 or rook f4. Let's try it. Am I running into anything with queen b5? Probably not. c4, I can go d4. Okay, let's do it. f5 seems like a great square for my rook because it would eye his e5 pawn. Um, it also somewhat safeguard, safeguards my e6 pawn because if queen g4 is played, rook f5 is a nice way to block the queen scope. And it's hard to chase away too, unless he's willing to play g4. The only thing I'm wondering is if like they can get counterplay in the center, particularly with this c4 push. That would be a sticking point maybe. But c4, d4. If he takes, I take with a queen, maybe b3. Okay, so he does play queen g4, and here's where I was thinking rook f5. Which conveniently gets out of the pin as well. So no, no longer a pin. Yeah, let's do that. If queen d4, then I can move the knight, like knight d7. That would be a unique double attack. It would attack e5 three times, knight, queen, and rook, and also to attack c2. Well, c2 might be somewhat of a poison pawn. Yeah, I think it kind of would be. Hmm, yeah, I don't know about queen g4. I don't like that move for white. I would not have played that if I were him. Maybe he overlooked rook f5 as a defense. Okay, so I can move this knight now. Rook takes e5 is not possible because he trades and then takes on c5. So knight d7, I can do that same double attack. He'll get his bishop in. I take c2, rook c1. And that's counterplay, at least for him. 
Okay, time to give this a little bit of thought. I want to move my, my knight, but at the same time, I'm not sure about the consequences of bishop d6. So knight d7, bishop d6, queen takes c2, let's say rook a c1. Hmm. Could also play rook c8 to begin with. Maybe that's decent. But let's look at that principal line. Knight d7, bishop d6, queen takes c2, rook a c1. I could play queen d2, sticky close to his e rook. So that no rook e7, rook c7 can be played. But mm, I don't know. It might be worth a pawn for him to, to do this. I could also take that pawn on b2 after I take on c2. Just really unsure if I want to risk it. Okay, let's just do this. I bet the computer will like knight d7, but we'll see. <laughs> Rook c8 is simple. I keep my minute and a half roughly time advantage. I'm happy with this. If he takes c5, I take the queen, and I'm still attacking c2. I just feel I want this rook involved before I go pawn hunting on his second rank. I think he should play queen d4. I thought he should play queen d4 last move. I'm not sure about f3. And on queen d4, I'm probably looking at knight moves. Knight a6 crossed my mind to attack the bishop, also attack c2. b6 is possible. Just a simple move to reinforce the knight. Maybe I have an idea of g5 and rook f4 as well, somewhere down the line. I plan on pressuring him on the clock pretty significantly. He's below five minutes now. And last time he did well when the position became somewhat uh, complicated in time pressure. Not to say that I won't avoid a complex position if necessary. Hmm. So if b6, I wonder if c4 is any good. b6, c4, I have knight a6. Uh, I can take on d5 then. What about knight a6, bishop d6, queen b6? It's an idea that crossed my mind a little while ago. Then we trade queens. We're attacking c2. Our pawn structure is pretty bad in that position, though. I'm not sure about that line. If knight d7, bishop d6, queen takes c2, rook c1 might be an issue. G5 seems like a decent move. Because it introduces the idea of rook f4. Let's do that. Establishes a pawn on a dark square too. I just have a feeling c4 might be something he's considering. And I know in, in the line with b6, c4 was a potential problem. So 
this gives me the out of rook c4 whenever he plays c4. Or rook f4, rather. Okay, so he does that. That's a little passive. He's cutting off his own bishop. Okay, let's just go here. So if he takes, it's nice that I can take with a pawn. Yep, c4 back on the docket. Let's go h6. So if c4, rook f4, he can't defend this pawn. So he backs the queen off. So knight d7, bishop d6, queen into c4. I'm attacking a2. Hmm. He's staying solid. He's not committing to anything. If rook f4, I wonder if he'll go g3. This is his idea. Rook f4 being played to discourage c4. Rook f4, g3. Rook f5, let's say. c4, d4, maybe. Let's try that. Maybe I can provoke him into, I mean, g3 is kind of a weakening move. I might be able to provoke him into doing that. I'm trying to catch him playing too actively. Okay, he adjusts there, so he, maybe he's going for rook d4. Okay, I'm going to give in and play this move. He's going to get his bishop into d6, but I have queen c4. I'm attacking a2, it's kind of annoying. Presents a conundrum as to how he should defend his queen side. Hmm. Let's go queen into b3. Continue probing. Maybe knight can come back to c5 and go to a4. Or c5 and go to, to b7. Just maybe trying to come in here. Let's go b5. Now I've got b6 opened up for the knight. Let's go here. If queen d3, queen d3 would be interesting, trying to come into g6. I might play rook f5 against that. Again, trying to goad him into playing his g-pawn forward. Knight c4. Okay, let's do that. Probably he's going rook e2. Now I'm going to be back with this guy. 
just to guard a7. Who's lagging? Hopefully not us. Okay, we'll go a6. Let's hide our king. I feel like we have a good grip on the position, but it's hard to make progress. H4, he's striking. Can I win b2? Not sure about that. So if I take, he takes with the queen, I take b2. Uh, I don't know. Okay, let's take and find out. If I take b2, if he goes rook b1, I have queen c4. Is a nice point. But I'm not sure we want to risk that. Hmm. All right, I'm going to try it. I'm not sure about the outcome of this move. But... Queen h3, I have d4, is what I'm thinking. And that defends the crucial e6 pawn. And then if he takes, I have time to play knight d3. It's kind of thin, though. It's going to get complicated. At least I'm going to get him to, to think. <laughs> Queen g4. Okay. So rook f5, he's going to play rook b1. So let's go here. We'll go here. Mm, rook e3, maybe. Nope. I get this in. OK, this is a nice move to get in. Okay, let's just bring this back, just to be uber, super duper safe. Maybe could have maintained my knight there, I'm not sure. So now I'm looking at rook c2. There's a way to coordinate, let's back him off. No rook g4. Okay, let's do this. Gotta watch my time now. Queen e4 is slightly annoying. Check. Let's go here. Threaten g2. Also kind of threatening knight h4. This is a good position for me, I think. My time is really low, though. Time warning. Uh, OK, let's take. Check. Check. All right. So bullet skills. Time for bullet. <laughs> Check. Check. Uh huh. Check. Check. Let's secure the draw first. Check. Check. All right. 
Check. 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 Check mate. All right, we got the mate at the end. Yeah, bullet comes in handy once in a while. <laughs> You're able to pull off stuff like that. Okay, highly interesting game. Um, I'm once again in a position where I have to go very soon, so I'm just going to do a very quick postmortem. So, yeah, it was interesting strategically in the middle game because um, it was pretty balanced, I felt. And the opening wasn't anything to write home about. It's just both sides bringing out their pieces. And he played knight e5. I'm not sure objectively that's the best decision. Bishop takes leads to, a, I think, a pleasant position for black. Maybe I should take on d3 after all. But I played knight d5 instead. Because if I take on d3 here, he would have to take with a pawn. Since queen takes would allow knight takes e5. So there's that nice point about uh, him having to stick with a pawn. Yeah, I think this position is pretty close to equal. Um, I do like the fact that I was able to get my pawn to d5. This standoff that we have between the bishop and the knight is roughly a wash, I think, because if ever I move that knight, he is going to get the bishop into d6. I slightly prefer having the knight in this scenario because I feel like I have the power to decide if his bishop will get to d6 or not. Yeah, and this is a controversial decision, FG or HG. It's, um, I think it's a toss-up. The computer doesn't seem to have much preference one way or the other. And F takes seemed uh, enticing because of the prospect of the rook F5 move and just the play down the F file in general. So that's why I went for it. So take, take, he went here. I didn't like that move for him. The engine seems to indicate it might be a small mistake. It instead prefers C4. Okay, so just trying to undermine the center. I was worried about c4 in a couple contexts. Rook f4, okay, I could do that. Pin him here. Take, take, take. Rook a f8, maybe before recovering the pawn. Queen e3, queen takes d5, equal, okay. So he went queen g4, I played rook f5. f3, also didn't like that move. I think he kind of started to drift right around here. And he was burning some time. So knight d7 would have been good, huh? What about bishop d6? If queen takes c2, I was worried about this line with the rook potentially coming in. But yeah, I mean, the computer, I had a feeling the materialistic computer would, would not mind this. But to me, it looks like he's gaining some initiative. Check. What about queen b6? And the same thing, take the pawn. OK, well, what if he just does this? Queen c3, eyeing the rook. That slows him down a little bit because there's no rook takes b7. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, knight d7 maybe should have been played. Objectively, it's it's probably the best move. But I felt like I maintained a small edge by doing what I did in the game. Probably if I really want to capitalize, though, I would have had to pull the trigger on knight d7 earlier. The time that I did it was, um, you know, I had some, I had made some nice consolidating moves. I'm putting pawns on dark squares against his bishop, but... By the time I did it, it didn't have nearly the effect as it did earlier because he was much better coordinated here. Yeah, and I think this position is pretty balanced. Um, if engine versus engine from this position, if, uh, if two engines played against each other, I think a draw would be the likely result. Not sure about this operation for me either. I was kind of excited about it, but I do weaken my dark squares somewhat. And the fact that he can always threaten to come in with his queen on the dark squares in the future is annoying. Also, my queen is getting a little walled in. Hmm. I would have loved to play a5 and b4. This bishop was pesky. It's kind of like, can't live with it, can't live without it. Um, if I ever I take it, then they take and they get instant pressure on e6. They're just perfectly geared up towards that. So I can't really take this bishop. But in the meantime, it's, it's taking away a lot of squares from me, like f8 and... Uh, allowing the queen to come in, guarding b4, guarding e5. So I tried to wait him out here. Took, oh, g4 would have been a good move. I didn't see g4 when he had played h4. I am wondering about this move. If it, if it works out tactically, I had a feeling it would barely work out tactically. Like one line I saw was rook b1, 
looks good to attack this, but I have queen c4, hitting his queen, and also the rook on e2. So this would happen, and I'd just be up a pawn for nothing. So he went queen g4, and I did d4. I thought this was necessary, because I definitely don't want to lose e6 when he's attacking both of my rooks. That would be bad news. So d4, and I think he took it. Knight d3, looks like I played OK. I was much more scared of rook e3, though, because I noticed that this would threaten queen e4. I did see that I had rook c3, but it looked kind of dicey with Check. queen e4 like walking into this pin. Computer seems to think I'm fine after this, but volatile position to play with, with little time on the clock. So I do like the fact that I managed to outplay him from here. This was, um, I don't know, nice piece of revenge from yesterday <laughs> where I totally fell apart in time pressure. Oh, he's actually not threatening rook takes f4 because I have queen e3. Aha, uh -huh, so I do have time to do this and attack g2. Yeah, because if rook takes f4, check. check, and then I win this or take with this rook. Right, okay. Yeah, I figured I was missing something. I played it kind of close to the best around here, but with 45 seconds, 30 seconds here o'clock, you're going to play that way. Yeah, knight f4 was better. Missing other moves, queen e3 check is good, followed by knight f4. Okay. Always when I felt like I had an advantage. I went here. I thought maybe queen takes d4 was possible, but I like this better because it attacks g2 as well. I think I could take this pawn at my at my leisure, basically. Here, I grabbed on d4, pushed f5. Okay, yep, another good move that went unnoticed with 20 seconds left. Knight h4. Check. I thought he would just play king g1 right now, but he did this. And Check. I thought, you know, let's just do this. Neutralize his e-pawn. That's his only trump card. Now, when he played rook e7, I thought... Um, Check. I thought after this and the knight d3, he was going to go after my a-pawn. But he just traded Check. everything. And, yeah, it wasn't perfect from Check. here, but I got the job done. He might Check. be able to draw, I don't know. Oh, okay, I missed knight c2 going into a winning king and pawn ending. Check. So. Check. Okay, well, eventful game. Check. And I got the checkmate off from here. See, he lost his bishop. Check. Very eventful mate. game. I got to run, guys, but thank you for watching. I'll be back tomorrow with another standard game. Bye, guys.